So you know, every week I do these pretty little intros where I typically look up a quote to see what's going on. This is about blogging, and all the really cool quotes about blogging have the word blog in them. Blog. Blah. Just makes it sound terrible. That, and I am Evo Terra. And this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Books in Beer, your periodic pedaling down the possibly pedantic path of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and tonight we're talking about three free blog tools for authors. But before we get there, we must visit the beer. And after the day that I've had, beer is something I greatly desire. Eva, what you got cooking over there? Well, I'm going with the Clown Shoes Crunkle Sam once Ooh, again. Oh, that's a good one. Light, easy drinking, 11% barley wine. So that'll <laughs> be fun in a bomber. So hopefully I don't drink it all before the end of the show or it'll get loopy. Yeah. But bye now. Thanks for joining in. And you? Yeah. So I have a Great Divide Claymore Scotch Ale. Ooh. Um, I got, yeah. So I tried, I don't know how I'd miss this, but the Rumble, their IPA, uh, good stuff. Definitely a fan. So I started picking up the whole line. This thing is great. But this is the kind of day I had as we were prepping for the show. I was reading the label. And I got down to what I thought was sort of the brewing information on it, right? Being a home brewer, I'm kind of interested in this stuff. Roasted vegetables. I'm like, really? That's kind of <laughs> odd. Pot roast, seared lamb shank, and white beans. What the hell is in this beer? It's the suggested food pairings. I thought it was the brewing information. That's great. If anyone has a pot roast or lamb shank beer they are aware of, please send that information to us because I'm sure we would probably try it. I love it. Anyway, on with the more productive things this evening. Yes, we shall. That concludes the beer portion of the program, although we will continue to dip into it for uh, the rest of the program here. So this is part two of a three-part program, series of programs. That's the word I'm looking for. See, it's already kicking in. Uh, three series, three parts of this series, what we're talking about places for the author to be online. You know, Jeff and I talk about a lot of different things here on the program, but a question we get all the time is, I'm brand new to the web, what should I do? And last time around we talked about some free nameplate options, just a simple place to put your stake in the ground. And today on the program we're talking about three free blogging tools for those of you who have yet to jump into the wonderful world of blog. Jeff, what tools are we talking about? So we have three. The first is Blogger, then we're going to touch on Tumblr, and finally WordPress.com. And next week, I don't think Evo, you hit what the third part will be, that is self-hosting. So these are mid-range, pretty robust tools, but not ones that you're fully going to customize. Blogger, I'll start there. I was kind of surprised this was still a thing, to be honest, when uh, it showed up on the list of ones to discuss but apparently it is out there and uh, doing strong. Blogger is owned by uh, Google, and uh, they are working on more integration now with Google+, Plus. I assume, and a lot of the other tools, dusting off some of the uh, nooks and crannies of Blogger. Is that the case? Yeah, you know, Blogger, as you've alluded to, has been around for a long time. Many of us who've been in this space us, uh, kind of forget that it's actually still there. It's gone through several different revisions over time, but yeah, still around, still owned by Google, started by Ev Williams, the guy who founded Twitter too, but uh, so it's, it's built on a pretty decent platform, and it's got the support of Google back behind it, and finally, just recently, uh, even though Google Plus has been going strong for two years now, they have finally released some better, I won't say great, but better integration with the blogger platform, there was some question of, with Google+, Plus, do you need a blog? And uh, they do two very different things. So, yep, there, there is some, a lot new, more tightly interwoven customization, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, uh, but it does seem to be lean and mean and built to do one thing, and that's have posts that you can let people subscribe to and communicate with your followers on a regular basis. It is rock solid and simple, and on the downside, you can tell a blogger blog Always. Yeah, I'm, I'm no hoping. Idea. I'm hoping that eventually some of that might change, so that I don't mind that it looks like a blogger or blog, but you know some of the things are kind of silly. The the about is is 
very tiny, why don't they integrate more with my Google Plus profile? Um, a list of other blogs, why don't you do more with other sorts of Google applications you're tied into? So I see a lot of those sorts of things changing. Um, I will tell you, I'm rediscovering Blogger. I haven't really blogged for a couple of years now on a, on a regular basis personally. So I took two of my blogs that were self-hosted and shut those down and stopped paying a few bucks a month and ported them all over to Blogger, more so that they are an archive of things that are out there. And it was a pretty painless process, so who knows? If I do decide to revive them, I'm, I may play around at the Blogger platform. I was not aware you'd undertaken that, so I am amused. I will quiz you more on that particular thing later on. All right, shall we? Anything else on Blogger? Or shall we continue to the big T? No, let's let's let just one final thing on Blogger. Um, it's even though it's old, even though it's one of the classics, it is still an okay place to start. I, I would not shy away from it. The nice thing about Blogger is it's probably not going away from Google's standpoint. Then again, Google has been known to shut things down drastically. The good news is Google's very good about letting you port your data. So if, in fact, they do close it, chances are they'll let you export everything out, and you should be good to go. No more Blogger. Right. Okay. Next up, Tumblr. If anyone is not familiar with it, it's no E. Tumblr launched in the area of, uh, in the era of, one of those faddish to leave out your vowels, yeah, split yeah, so, and tumbler. Su su suppression of the E. E was, I don't know what we had against the E. I think because they saw it in email so many times, they didn't want to see it anywhere else. But anyhow, yes, yes. Tumblr. Yeah, so, and that's tumblr.com. Again, absolutely free to set up. And it is a pretty powerful tool. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this beast. I had a Tumblr account from early on, and every time I go back to Tumblr and I play with it, I throw up my hands in despair and run away. Um, and that's more of my own personal preference because I'm more of a hardcore kind of guy. Uh, but there's a lot going for it now that it didn't used to have. Uh, one up, it has a, uh, well, it's growth. It's huge. Uh, yeah. The number of search terms if for people looking for, hey, does so-and-so have a blog, has now been surpassed by does so-and-so have a Tumblr. Uh, for a lot of people, especially in a younger demographic, Tumblr, the, the Tumblr has become a uh, noun that has replaced blog. So they're almost synonymous, or in some cases, Tumblr is supplanting blog entirely. So even if you're not familiar with it, a whole hell of a lot of pe other people are. Yeah, Tumblr uh, has a pretty well-connected community around it. Uh, people who have Tumblrs uh, have connections with other people who are Tumblrs, where Blogger is just a blogging platform. And yes, there are some connectivity, but Tumblr really took that community idea and, and ran with it better than, than anyone else would be. And to me, Tumblr is great for the creative person who doesn't like a blank page staring them in the face. It's pretty simple. What would you like to do? Post a photo? You want to write something? It actually walks you through that where when you log into Blogger, for example, it's make a post. Well, I want to post about it. I don't know. There's, there's no encouragement over there. So I think that's part of the reason why Tumblr has been so successful is it kind of pulls you along and doesn't assume that you're going to write text immediately each time. Yeah, and the whole nature of, of Tumblr and that retumbling of content helps you as well. That community you mentioned, there's a very big directory where you can look up people who have similar interests. If you are a an author and you want to look up other authors, you can subscribe to their Tumblr uh, to their Tumblrs. And you can retumble their content, reshare it on, and so on, as well as in different categories. If you write about history or whatever, subscribe to those as well. And that helps generate content for you, as well as giving you a lot of really good examples. People who are, you know, in your exact area, what are they talking about? That's bound to spur ideas of your own. Yeah, I, I like that too. I also like the customize, uh, customizability, customization abilities. Custom, anyhow. Um, there are lots of people who've done some interesting things with the way a Tumblr looks. Now, if you're a designer, you're probably not going to be into it. I mean, you've got to pick a theme, um, but it's more than just colors and stuff. I, I've seen some that have a, a layout this way, and they do lots of things. It's all big one big image area, so you can do a lot. You, you don't get to crack open the code and fix everything the way you would want it to. That's next time we do our show on our, on our self-hosted model. But if you are a creative person and you want to do visual things or do something that's not just a standard blog look, that Tumblr might, might be what you're looking for. Yeah. 
couple final points here. One, you can take a custom URL and apply it to Tumblr as you can for Blogger, correct? Correct. So if you have mybigauthorname.com, you can use that full domain and point it at your Tumblr site. You don't have to use mybigauthorname.tumblr.com, which is nice. There are a bunch of template skins that you can apply for free to your Tumblr site to customize the look within limits. You can pay if you want really fancy uh, layouts and so on, but generally there's there's a lot more you can do to change the look and feel than you can with Blogger. However, that is fairly limited, and I guess the downside, one of the big downside for me for Tumblr, um, cats, lots of cats. There's, you know, the, the cheap image, funny meme, lol, lol, oh my god, R T F O L. Uh, you know, stuff passing around. There's a lot of that out there, and you have to do a little bit of weeding to get around it to find the good stuff sometimes. So It, it does skew a smidge younger, and therefore sometimes, uh, yeah, all the things you said, and <laughs> unfortunately more. Yeah, so my, my URL is uh, oldmanandhisrockingchair.tumblr.com, and I get all these other kids off my lawn. So Right on, right on. Anywho. Last up, WordPress. WordPress.com specifically, and that's important for us to make that designation for you because WordPress exists in two different worlds. Uh, there is the .com and then there is the .org, and there, there's more to it than that. Uh, the .com is the, much like Tumblr and Blogger, the place where you can go to set up your own big fat author dot wordpress dot com it's a hosted model that they provide where you can go to dot org and actually download the source code and install it on your own server and oh, we are so not talking about that on this particular program just the basic wordpress dot com I personally have never started a wordpress blog on wordpress dot com always on the hosted model um, Jeff what has been your personal experience with wordpress dot com do you have any yeah, I started on WordPress.com when I first got into it. I thought, why do I want to put this whole package installed when I can use their site for free? So that's what I did. And it worked well. Um, a lot of their model is what Tumblr later took. So it's, you know, you can go in and pick. There's certain plugins you can use and themes you can apply. And it's a very, it's very flexible within a range. So between here and here, you can do a whole lot. You want to go outside of that, that's next episode. Uh, but it's really easy to use, really intuitive. Um, I like that uh, the the blog nature of it, the, the traditional blog nature. You've got comments, you've got, uh, you can put, you know, if you want a photography blog, there's a lot of different styles you can apply. Uh, it's pretty versatile. I think it's more, you know what I want to say, it's more grown up than Tumblr. I mean, there well, are a lot of very, good. As, as I would say, WordPress.com is it's your, the, the interface you would use on WordPress.com is the exact same interface you would use on a hosted model where you were completely and totally on your own. It has full customization abilities. And again, with, within a certain range, you can do more on your own site. But if we look at the other ones between Tumblr and between Blogger, WordPress, you can really do a whole lot more. There are lots of themes you can apply to it, which will really give you what you're looking for. And as I said, it's it's the real deal. You're using a true blogging engine. You're using all the different fields that you normally would use, regardless of what CMS system you use in the future. Uh, WordPress is it. And it's also the world of blogs runs on WordPress. When you get out there and start using more of them, you'll find more people using WordPress than really for, for their own individual site, for their own content management system, than really anything else. I mean, movable type is all but dead, um, and it's, WordPress has really become the de facto. It's to the point where some people make an assumption that, Word, that website equals WordPress. So you're, you're using the right software. Yeah, now um, you, we talked a little bit about other types of blogs and files you can use through there. You can use your personal favorite, right? Podcasting and, and all that kind of stuff you can manage and run through a WordPress.com. Yeah, yeah, that's a great thing. If you want to embed a media file, like you want to record audio every week or a video file, WordPress.com supports that natively, all, all within the system. So that's so that's kind of nice. It's a they 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 really are the the I don't want to say that they're cutting edge, but you know they're 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 like the, they're your cool uncle. They've been around for a little while, but they've got some nifty things to do. Even though those kids on Tumblr to make fun of them all the time, um, it, it's still the pro way to go. Yeah, and I think it it extends something else you you touched on, which will lead into next week, where Tumblr, 
you're an author and you just want to use Tumblr and have a nice, flexible site, you know, Tumblr will work great. But WordPress, you can start on a WordPress.com site, and if you want to grow, I mean, there's huge businesses that run their entire corporate website off of a WordPress system. So it has a huge upper range. We're going to touch on that next time. If you think you want to grow in the future, then you know, WordPress offers that where Tumblr really does not. Yeah. So don't know that we've got a real hard recommendation on what to use. Uh, again, if you're brand new, this is information for you. I would say try them all. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Just simply start, fart around, and see what works out for you and whichever one you like. Hey, that's okay because the reality is you can put your – all three of them will let you use your own domain name. All three of them let you export if you decide you want to move. There's really no danger of getting involved except for the, the cats. Cats are kind of dangerous. Well. All right, kids. Well, that will do it for this particular episode of Books and Beer. We'll put links to all of uh, all three of those things and a few special words that we use to talk about them on our website, booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help authors cut through the complexity of indie publishing. Does that sound cool? Yes. Yes, it does. You can find out more at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show. <laughs>